Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is so good to be in the space with you all. Um, well, let's get this, let's get this party started. Um, welcome and let's celebrate and honor Black women in the HIV movement. Welcome to the journey on Liberation Way, the house ball. So we've celebrated the House of Renaissance, the House of Influence, the House of Torch Snatchers, and today we will celebrate our trailblazers. So I am Ebony Turk. I am a leader within PWN, and it is my honor to be here with you today to celebrate and honor Black women in the HIV movement. I am joined by my sister, Octavia Lewis. She will introduce herself in a minute. Um, this campaign was created by Black staff at PWN to uplift and work, uplift the work that Black women do in the HIV community and to honor them for their amazing work and to honor them for being ama the amazing humans they are. Today, we want to celebrate freedom, joy, and liberation amongst Black cis and trans women. So at PWN, I want to be very clear that we are in support of all women's liberation, which includes Black trans women liberation. Recently, there has been some conversation about CS women versus trans women in the world. And as a CS Black woman, I want to uplift that and talk a little bit about that. I understand and respect the fluidity fluidity and inclusiveness of gender. I feel privileged to share life with my trans sisters who don't have the same lived experience as me. It enables us to learn and grow from each other. I'm sure we've all heard the saying from Malcolm X, the most unprotected and disrespected person in America is the black woman. That statement rings true for all women, including black trans women. And it doesn't help cis or trans women to be fighting against one another around the world against our trans sisters. That helps no one. Let's commit to learning and growing from each other. Let's fight the attacks against all women together. That's how we liberate ourselves on this liberation way. Let's move forward on liberation way hand in hand to create a better world for us all. Octavia. Yes. As my sister Ebony stated earlier, we are here to celebrate and uplift all women. It is an honor and privilege to co-host today's house ball with my sister. My name is Octavia Y. Lewis, and I am a board member of PWN USA. I can't tell you all how grateful I am to the staff who worked tirelessly to make this event happen today. The intentionality and attention to details were thought were, were thought about throughout the whole process of this program. My mentor always instilled in me that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Those words have never been truer or valid than they are today and how we chose to celebrate and uplift the narrative of cis and trans women for all of the valuable work they do for our community. So without further ado, let the ceremony commence as we celebrate our trailblazers. Dear sisters, I love these Ebony and love these and Octavia. Thank you for setting the tone. And we chose four of them as a theme because, you know, Black women and as all women, Black and Brown, you know, our marginalized societies, we all kind of create our own families. And ballroom is, in, is has a culture that creates houses of mothers and fathers that kind of create a family for those people who don't have traditional support from uh, their family that they were born in 
for the culture uh, that they kind of live in. So out of part um, came the ballroom culture, but we can just kind of celebrate our blackness, our greatness, our um, our family and extended family. And so we have a little video that goes through a little bit of history for you with ballroom culture that has become popular, popularized. You see Beyonce had a song, uh, Madonna kind of did it. We had shows on HBO. So we want to get a little bit of history when it comes to ballroom. I was inspired by voguing because voguing allows you to be anything and anyone you want to be. Vogue is within the realm of a dance family. And that's what it's supposed to be, a dance family. The name voguing comes from Vogue magazine. The movements that define the dance are based on model poses from the fashion publication. Willie Ninja, who's called the godfather of voguing, also drew inspiration from martial arts, ballet, gymnastics, and even pantomimes. In the critically acclaimed documentary, Paris is Burning, Ninja defines the dance as an extension of throwing shade. Instead of fighting, two people would settle their beef on the dance floor. So whoever had the best moves would be throwing the best shade. During the 1970s in Harlem, houses were formed within the larger dry ballroom scene. These houses serve as surrogate families, primarily for Black and Latino queer youth. Each house is led by a mother or father who also serve as guides to the ballroom community. House of La Vesia was the first to form in the late 70s. Other notable houses include the House of Extravaganza, Ninja, Pendavis, Corey, the House of Wong, the House of Dupree, and there are many others in New York and across the U.S. While many of the names came from the founders, other houses are named after designers like Chanel and Saint Laurent. Members come together to walk against one another in various categories at elaborate balls. Beyond the performance or throwing shade, these balls create a safe space for empowerment and belonging. Whatever you carry with you, you leave it on that floor, you know? Whether it's suffering from illness, whether it's suffering from acceptance, whether it's suffering from not having a place to call your home, your house becomes your home. After the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, when a large population of the ballroom community was hit hard, the legendary balls and the houses that organized them also became a place for activism and awareness. Younger generations of voguers can be seen taking the stage at smaller kiki balls hosted by the Gay Men's Health Crisis, an organization that advocates for the prevention of AIDS. It all started at GMAC when um, GMAC was trying to figure out how to get young people to come into the building, and so kiki balls began so we could sort of attract them to come in for services. These balls serve as an outlet for self-expression, activism, and offer a resource for gay and trans youth at risk of HIV, homelessness, abuse, and depression. Outside of ballroom culture, voguing has long been synonymous with fashion and glamour. It's often confused for Madonna's co-opted version of the dance form, but it means so much more to the community that made it. Dance is the one thing that you can control with your body. That's something that's a being that comes from you. When you can take anything that comes from you and gives you a certain amount of being comfortable in your own skin, I think that's great, you know? And that is empowerment. When you get up there, when you walk that ball and everyone's cheering for you in that moment, you feel like everybody sees you. It makes you feel like you're not alone.
Today, I will be reading the bios of our honorees. Kamaria Laffrey, House of Revolution. Kamaria is Black girl magic personified. Her leadership is focused on liberating the hearts and minds of women living with HIV, especially Black women. Kamaria is full of heart and compassion and is known to be spiritual, unapologetic, inspiring, and a beautiful soul. In addition to serving as the first Black co-executive director of the Ciro Project, she leads her own consulting firm, Empowered Legacies. She helps support and develop self-esteem, self-value, and empowerment to speak against injustices for women and girls living with HIV and AIDS. Kamaria continues to lead the way forward, inspiring hope, radical love, power, and healing for Black women living with HIV. Vanita Ray, House of Revolution. As described by her beloved community, Vanita Ray is bold, visionary of the new age HIV movement. Vanita inspires us with her transformative and energetic leadership and is a fierce racial justice warrior. Through her work, she is shifting the way the field sees HIV as a radical justice issue. Vanita serves as PWN's first Black co-executive director and built the very foundation of our annual Celebrate and Honor Black Women in the HIV movement. For over 40 years, Benita has mobilized activists, been a source of strength, and courageously created a community where Black women living with HIV are uplifted, respected, and most of all loved. Rania Copeland, House of Revolution. Rania Copeland is one of the most brilliant thought leaders working in the HIV movement. She has trained and inspired many people, especially in the Black community across the United States. In 2019, The Root named her one of the 100 most influential African Americans. Rania Copeland is an opinion leader and seasoned advocate leading the charge to end HIV in Black communities. She has dedicated years to advancing health, racial, and gender equity, and served as the first Black woman CEO and president of the Black AIDS Institute. Rania Copeland her own, has founded her own consultant firm, Equity and Impact Solutions, and continues to push forward to a better tomorrow for her community. Sierra C.C. Coven, House of Renaissance. Sierra C.C. Coven is an international maternal and family wellness advocate activist dedicated to advancing the rights for women living with HIV and their children. As a woman living with HIV in the South, C.C. has birthed two children and breastfed one who are both HIV negative. In the role of program manager at the Well Project, Cece has been afforded the opportunity to help advance the discussion around infant feeding and HIV. She is a fearless defender of bodily autonomy for Black women living with HIV, a torch snatcher, and a cherished advocate in her community. Tony Michelle Williams, House of Renaissance. Tony Michelle is an entertainer, mother of many, and the executive director of the Solutions Not Punishment Collaborative, affectionately known as SNAPCO. They are a collective of Black and trans abolitionists in Atlanta committed to keeping their community members safe, informed, and lit while building community power. Tony Michelle's approach to activism is honest, authentic, and a flair that reminds people that women of trans experience are here. They are bold and will never be pushed quietly into the margins.
All right, so we have um, some riddles. I think it is trivia, trivia. That's what it is. We have trivia. Let's do trivia. Um, let's see. I am one of the most prominent figures who helped to advance the rights of the LGBT community. And I'm sorry, my thing is on in the way. All right. United States. In the 1960s and 70s, there were two movements happening at the same time, the civil rights movement and the gay rights movement. Some people say that I helped to galvanize the gay rights movement after I threw a brick at Stonewall in. As a person of trans experience, it was important for me to help lead a series of protests because I was sick of being disrespected. Who am I? <laughs> I already see the answer in the chat before I even stop. Yes, I am the one and only Marsha P. Johnson. Let's give it up for Marsha P. Johnson. Yes. Okay. Many trailblazers call me mama. In fact, at last year's CHBW, I was honored as, as a movement mother. I am the first black trans woman to be honored by President Barack Obama, being selected as a champion of change during the commemoration of the 30th anniversary of HIV in this country. I am the founder and executive director of Lagenda Inc., a nonprofit, a nonprofit organization led by African African American transgender women to empower transgender women of color in the metro Atlanta area. Who am I? You all are getting these fast before we even start reading them. Yes. All right. Let's see. I am the house ball icon and queen mother of the first house ball straight out of Harlem, New York. I pioneered civil rights equality, and the integration of pageants. In ballroom, a house is a safe haven for queer people of color and a home with the family for those who don't have one. As with any traditional home, it is structured with the mother, the head, leader, financer of the house, and children, younger members of the house, a staple that is still implemented today. My iconic house is the first ballroom house and was the first to host benefits to raise awareness during the 1980s HIV AIDS epidemic. Who am I? I am the one and only Crystal. I'm going to say her name wrong. Somebody say it for me. Let Crystal love <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Congratulations to all the winners. <laughs> all right. So is it time for me to go into the spoken word? Yes, yes, please, Octavia. Okay. So I have the honor of reading a piece from a Black trans um, an individual whose name is Kaneem Mafa, who published her book this year called Becoming Purple. So please look her up on um, Amazon. Her book is called Becoming Purple. And she wrote a piece for Mama Didi. And the name of her piece is called A Moses Like You. I had a dream last night. We were all dressed in white. We were healing the sick, raising the dead, and giving the blind sight to. And I don't think I could have ever dreamed this dream had it not been for a Moses like you. You've encouraged girls like me to embrace our destiny, pick the lock, and set our minds free to begin to embrace who we are in the divine body. Everyone who has known you 
have had the privilege of being in the presence of a, a true visionary, a missionary with the faith to carry the message of hope everywhere you've been, asked to take it. There were even times of great sickness where you wondered to yourself secretly, am I going to, am I going to make it? But you did, Mama Didi. You're doing just what you were called to do and you're living if not in vain, for we shall see your vision through. For this is our creator's gift to us passed down through you. There is only one Didi Shambly. Of this, I'm sure you've been told because when that whole spirit created her, after that, they broke the mold, making her tall, bold, beautiful, charming, and courageous with the message so contagious that everywhere she traveled, she's been certain to plant a seed. They may not have spread like fire, but they will grow as tall as trees. For I had a dream last night. We were all dressed in white, healing the sick, raising the dead, and giving the blind sight too. And I don't think I could have ever dreamed this dream had it not been for a Moses like you. For what she has instilled in me has been the power to withstand the pain and appreciate the rain, to travel the highways and the byways, from the church house to the courthouse, to the hospital, police station, and city jail without the faint of faith, for there is a story that we must indeed tell. The truth is they may have once forsaken us, but it is now us who have forsaken ourselves. Instead of being like those faithful disciples of 12 who knew that they were not the fallen, forgotten, or failed one, and there was room at the table for us all as the divine daughters and sons. Oh yes, I hear it. The voice of the Holy Spirit urging us to go forward and to live our dreams certainly not as phenomenal women, but as extraordinary queens. That word was once used to demean, but beings like you have stepped forward and helped to wash that stigma clean. So hold on and prepare for what you call another worldwide tour, for this race is not given to the swift, but to the one who endures. Nonetheless, if those stirring words of Dr. Martin Luther King I may not get there with you. Were to be part of our creator's plan. Please never doubt your most blessed fruit. Who shall see the promised land? For our redeemer knows your soul, has seen your tears, and is in control. I, I believe this, Mama Didi, and I know it in my heart to be true. For I had a dream last night. We were all dressed in white. We were healing the sick and raising the dead, and giving the blind sight too. And I know for certain, I could have never dreamed this dream had it not been for a Moses like you. And I thank you all. So we are now going to have Rania Copeland and Tony Michelle. Hi. Hey, Rania. Hi, how are you? 
I'm good. How are you? Good. I feel so good. I'm warm and lovely and all the things. All right. Let me let let y'all talk. It's so great to see you all. (laughs) (laughs) How are you? I haven't seen you in such a long time. I know. It's been years. I feel like before the pandemic. How have you been? How's your family? Good. Good. I have a lot of kids now. Um, uh, (laughs) But good. I'm feeling good. Things are going well. Awesome. Awesome. Things are going well over here as well. Um, You know, I'm in Atlanta holding it down. Um, I just want to just give space to the poem uh, that was dedicated to Miss Dee Dee Chambly. It was an incredible, beautiful poem. And um, yeah, the writer obviously knows Miss Dee Dee. Uh, I'm so really grateful to have also been a part of Miss Dee Dee's visions of mm-hmm. this promised land um, and safety and longevity for Black trans leadership. I'm honored to have been one of her many chosen daughters to uh, mm-hmm. bring justice and, and fun and joy and, and spirit to our movement. So really enjoyed that poem. How about you? You enjoyed it? I did. I did. Um, uh, I think being able to like be in spaces where things are manifesting, right? To have like people who like put all this work in um, and it show up. Like, I feel like that's like magic every day, right? And to think about like your leadership and the leadership of other trans, um, black trans women specifically on this call, like is exciting. Like I just had to like chat, um, uh, Araya, like this is so exciting. I'm so excited for you. And like these movements and the way things are changing um, and, uh, getting closer to like I think the land of what like equity and freedom feels like for all black women so uh I feel like my face hurts and I had to turn my video off because I feel like I was like cheesing like this the whole time from the very beginning of this call I was like I need to (laughs) take it back because my cheeks hurt and I feel like that poem I kind of like took it to um that next place so we need spaces like this and I'm really grateful for it Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get into our conversation, honey. Okay, Who's starting us off? Okay. Uh, you start off. You start off. I'm starting off. So um, y'all know me. I'm a silly girl. So we're going to have some serious <laughs> conversation. But I first want to know um, what, who, which Black woman, dead or alive, mm-hmm. right? Would you have a cocktail with? Mm -hmm. And which Black woman, dead or alive, would you have a mocktail with? Different drinks, different experiences, different vibes. Okay, so I would say I want to have a cocktail with most people because I feel like it always makes things fun. And so uh, I think the cocktail um, would be with a person that I've always said I want to have a conversation with, which is Shirley Chisholm. Um, I think it was like in the second or third grade when I did like a report on like people who had ran for president. And of course, me being me, I was like, I am not about to write no report about this, these funky old white men. And so, you know, it was like, I'm gonna do Shirley Chisholm. Um, and finding out about this like bold and badass woman who said pretty much in my, I feel like was like, F all y'all. Um, I'm about to do this and I'm gonna run for president and I'm gonna be bold and unapologetically black and loud um, is my kind of girl. And so I would want to have some alcohol with her um, because I would want to ask her some like very real questions like, you know, like, you know, whose ass did you want to be? And like, did you get like, I would want to know like all the details of what the experience was like um, of even getting to a place where she could run for president. Um, And I feel like she was um, pretty saucy. And so I would love to get down with her for real, for real. So um, I think her would be a cocktail and a mocktail. Who's somebody who, who, you know, whether they were drunk or just regular would be an okay conversation. Um, Maybe I would probably have a mocktail with Michelle Obama um, (laughs) because I feel like, you know, she's probably going to always keep it a little bit above board. Do I heard some stories um and I feel like you know she could give me all of the becoming and you know um how to navigate a partnership and 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 you know the experiences that she's had I feel like she would be good for um a mocktail situation 
Absolutely. I love these answers. They're going up in the chat for us. Okay. It's giving yes to Shirley. Okay. And yes to Michelle for a mocktail. I love yes, this for yes, you. Yes. Are you going to answer this question too? Because I want to know for you. For sure. For sure. Yes, okay. for it. yes. Cocktail. Well, this is the thing. Okay. Is it worth a cocktail or is it worth a blunt? I'm not sure. My <laughs> girl will forever be with me. Okay. Oh, I yeah. We need to have yeah. a set. Okay. Yes. Maybe it's both yes. going at the same time. Who knows? Yes. Yes. I, that's I what I would imagine it would be. I need to be in conversation with Whitney Houston. Um, she is literally my favorite human being. Oh. Yes, she is the voice, but um, just her story, um, just around not being able to express herself, but knowing that her anointing is what blesses the world and she allowed it to bless her um, and to carry her as long as it did, even through the moments that she didn't want to make it. I know that 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 to be true for myself um, in many parts of my life and so many other trans women and folks who are struggling, whether it be with um, living with the HIV diagnosis or just trying to be seen and loved and heard. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so she's just that girl, baby. She's funny. I know what a cocktail, baby. She's We're going to be kicking up a storm. Um, I know she's going to keep it real with me. Um, she's going to want me to keep it real with her. And another thing that I love about her so much, and I just want to talk to her about is her grace. It's like, mm -hmm. how do you maintain so much grace for um, this like industry mm -hmm. as an entertainer and an organizer for myself, but just, you know, um, how do you maintain so much grace for this industry, your family, um, especially her family? How did she keep her love and commitment to her family? Um, I think just so many queer people um, have to embody those different stages of grace and power and resilience at different times. And honey, I just want to talk to my Auntie Nippy, okay? And I want to ask her how she feel about all these movies that came Ooh. out of our, you know, because I don't think she, even the last way, I, I think she'll be like, you know, y'all should have got a trans girl to do the lip syncing for me, baby, because I'm not <laughs> sure if that was really hitting, you know? So <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll see, you know? And Mocktail, hmm. Mocktail, you know, it. I, I, I love music, so all of my people will stay inside of like um, entertainment. I love and it. I'm an organizer, so I've already had many mocktails and cocktails and blunts with so many of you already. Y'all are my favorite people. <laughs> uh, but for me, I think it will have to be Lady Gaga or really mocktails. I, I love Gaga. Listen. She, Gaga, I don't know if I'll be able to drink with Gaga because I think I would see a lot of her whiteness. But if I'm not drinking, uh -huh, mm -hmm. I already I expect her best the self. <laughs> You know, I expect the whiteness. I won't have any other kind of expectation, girl. So, you know, I would want to just talk to her. She's literally one of my favorite artists. Um, mm -hmm. I even traveled all the way to Las Vegas to see her do her jazz numbers for my birthday last year. So um, I just love her talent and her skill and just her embodiment to not give a fuck about mm -hmm. what people mm -hmm. have to say, how they would say it, to stand in the gaps of like discrimination and discomfort. She's always the one like causing the discomfort and she eats it up every time. Yeah. Um, I even love how she's transformed herself and rebranded herself over and over again. And again, just as a trans girl, baby, we got to do it in order to survive. And as Black women, women in general, we got to keep rebranding ourselves, not only to stay relevant, but to, to meet the time and to meet the people that we're supporting um, in that moment. And so um, I just love how she does it. It's really beautiful and sexy too. Mm -hmm. She's such an artist. She like she's is. Such an artist. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I just, yes. So I'll have a mock I can, see that. I can see that. I feel like when I remember, like, um, I know you as an activist, um, mm -hmm. but then I remember uh, whenever I engage with you, I feel like I'm like, 
oh, but she's an artist too. And uh, I feel like it like uh, refines kind of everything about you. And it's very much, I don't know, I feel like it's maybe like the art is first um, and it shows up in yeah. everything. That's I beautiful. definitely have had to come to that over the years because um, for so long it, it could not be first. Um, mm -hmm. And so in a lot of the spaces or conversations that I'm invited to um, centers activism and advocacy, which is perfect. Um, but my joy is entertaining folks and making folks smile and um, supporting them and feeling a sense of belonging and to move them through more expression in their bodies and their voice. And um, art just does it. Performance artistry just does it for me. Yeah. Oh, it's making my mouth water and my cheeks uh, hurt. Uh, it sounds so beautiful. You can feel it. It, it emotes off of you. So Yes. Thank okay, you. so wait, now it's my turn for my question, right? Go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, you know, of course, my questions are all like, talk about this. And let's uh, get heady with it. But I'm going to give my own question to myself first um, to, start a, to start us off. And so my question was really about, um, like, how do we want... Um, uh, uh, cis and trans women to show up for us as Black women, right? Um, and so maybe I'll start and then you can go, uh, but I can, uh, so I'll start with, you know, how, uh, wait, let me make sure I'm clear on my own question, um, how um, I think and how I try to show up um, for Black trans women, because um, I think it's kind of an evolving process, an ongoing process. Um, but for me, it's been first kind of about really um, recognizing privilege that I have. And I think sometimes, uh, I think that concept has been, or it was like a newer concept at first, because I was like a black woman, I'm oppressed. What do you mean? Um, but understanding kind of the different privileges that um, we have. And for me, that meant like, okay, girl, we got to learn stuff on our own, right? Like, what does it mean um, to, uh, what does spectrum of sexuality mean? What does a spectrum of gender mean? And yeah. what does that mean for me? And, and what are the things that I should know and understand um, so that I'm not asking black trans women to educate me? And so, because I also know what that feels like to have this group of folks act like they're paying me to be a professor. And so really taking that, making sure that I had some like baseline understanding um, and then also doing it from a place of humility, right? So like I'm constantly learning and constantly growing and there's no like end point to it. And so sometimes that shows up as like really trying to be a deep listener in spaces and not trying to um, add my experience, my thoughts, um, but really kind of listen deeply and um, ask questions when maybe it feels appropriate. Um, but uh, for me, that's kind of one way that it shows up, um, as well as kind of like this ongoing like I feel like, you know, like learning regularly and whether it's like, hey, who, who should I be following on social media? Um, what are the articles that I need to be kind of listening to? Who are the kind of influencers and folks who are thought leaders? Um, that is for me really important. <laughs> and showing up around like where I can share and give power. Um, and so, you know, when I'm in places like, okay, hey, we need a speaker. Are there any uh, black trans women who are in the space right now? No, okay, how can we pull them in? How do I make sure if I can influence folks getting paid for that? Because uh, we aren't doing free labor and surely uh, we're not gonna be paying people less, especially black trans women. And if there's a space for me, and I think often sometimes in the places I'm in, I can say, okay, this is how much you have to pay people or you need to make sure that you're budgeting X, Y, Z amount for this. Um, that for me is something that I'm constantly doing. Like, I feel like in at least like half of the calls, I'm in like, hey, this person should be in this meeting. Hey, this person um, should be a speaker. Hey, make sure you pay these people. Um, and then if I need to, doing the kind of side hustle conversation of, yo, this is what you need to demand. Um, and uh, this is that kind of negotiation and the power that I think you can have in these spaces. Um, so for me, that's one um, other way uh, that I think that I try and show up as a Black cis woman for my um, Black um, trans sisters. And then maybe two other ways, maybe, no, maybe I'll give one other way and I'll stand it over is I often I find myself in spaces that are not like HIV and activism, it's family and it's friends. And it is so, the conversations can be so transphobic. Um, and being um, 
very happy and good with like shutting it down um, uh, or having conversations. Sometimes it just depends on the mood I'm in. Cause sometimes I can't like the ignorance um, is hard, especially if I've been having a good time. Um, <laughs> but uh, that is really important. I think that when we're in spaces, um, whether it's like, oh, uh, 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 who is that? Or who you would or wouldn't date that there are spaces for us to kind of show up in that. Um, sometimes, like I said, it's inqui inquisitive. Like, so why do you feel like that? What makes you think it would be different? And trying to kind of talk people through a path towards um, some better understanding. And then sometimes it's just, no, I'm gonna just shut it down um, because I think you're in so far of a place or I'm in a place where I can't kind of move that forward. But um, those are some of the ways I try and show up um, that I hope can will con consistently kind of evolve um, as I become a better ally and supporter of Black trans women. Yeah, thank you for that. You know, it's not, uh, none of it's easy, you know, being in a woman's body and experience. Uh, it's not easy for any of us. And so um, thank you for sharing that. And just to um, jump on to the question or answering the question, because I know we're, um, <clears throat> we have a time limit, um, but I just want to affirm that. I do, I want to affirm the power in um, interrupting violence and bullshit as it's happening. Um, but I also want to uplift what it takes and what it requires. Yeah for one to have the skill and the capacity to do that because everyone doesn't have the skill to uh, to move someone through an interview, a motivational interview and, and, and about yes. how they really feel about a thing um, or to um, move them through um, and guiding them through their own gender journeys or understanding of genderhood or womanhood mm -hmm. um, or their own manhood and masculinity, and masculinity. So it does require a skill. And I am so excited for where our movement is headed um, well, we are as a movement <clears throat> building the capacity to support each other in, in those skills um, because we are beyond pronouns. We are beyond bathrooms. We're beyond mm -hmm. these things. And there are real issues. Um, mm -hmm. Death, murder, violence, rape that, you know, when people ask those questions to abolitionists around, well, what happens to the murderers? What happens to the rapists, right? That a lot of times, many even abolitionists, we get stuck there, right? Um, and then many, many times when we're talking about abolition, we're not talking about those crimes. Um, and as a trans woman, you know, sometimes that is the justice that I can um, imagine, which is uh, punitive, right? Um, jail time. And so I'm excited for our movement and our leaders to be in more rigorous conversation about how do we build our capacity and how do we build the skill of other folks to interrupt the violence when it's happening. That's not, again, that's beyond pronouns and beyond people wanting to respect us. You know, it's, it's more than, it's something a little bit more than that. And we are, we're tithering that line. <clears throat> I also just lastly want to add um, to the question. Um, a few years ago, I had a conversation, well, it's been about eight years ago now. I had a conversation with my mom, my birth mother about, um, and I have many mothers, darling, many mentors, okay? Uh, but my you, birth you mother- You can't get this fabulous without it, honey. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment. It's an investment, you know? Um, Lots of coaching, lots of needing, you know, to to get got together. Okay. Um, and so my birth mom, she shared with me something very powerful in that conversation. She shared with me just the, the, the need for her to have space to grieve what was for her, um, no matter what my truth is and has always been, um, she still has to grieve. And as a woman that loves Black women and loves my mama, I wanted to be able to honor that space for her to grieve me, right? And any other version of who I am and or who I was. And so that conversation and then along with years of healing, giving her space, checking her, her checking me, boop, boop, bop, um, led to um, a poem that I wrote that I sh um, translated and um, over time actually wrote, uh, created um, 
morphed it into a pledge of mm -hmm. how Black communities should and could be and can be protecting all Black mm -hmm. trans folks and all Black folks, right? Not just trans people, but all Black folks over time. And it was really rooted and grounded in that conversation. Can I share with this group? Is that okay? Real quick, just a quick play. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in the chat just so that you can have it. And so that all of you all can sign the pledge too. We're about 3,000 pledges, uh, signed pledges in strong while we're also trying to stop Cop City in Atlanta. So again, many intersecting issues, but I would love to share this with you all. This is the pledge to protect Black trans people. Some key things to do to check yourself. Number one, I will not kill you or destroy your spirit. You are invaluable to humanity. And my mama told me that. My mama told me that. Um, number two, I will be curious about your well-being, not because you are sexually or entertaining, uh, entertaining or sexually fulfilling, but because it is my desire and duty to relate, grow, and transform myself for the sake of real connection and belonging for all of us, right? It's my duty to relate to you, mm -hmm. to grow with you and to transform myself. That is what we're asking and needing for folks to do in order to keep our lives, um, keep us alive and keep each other alive. Number three, I will be present for your youth and believe your truths of sexual abuse and bullying, harassment, anxiety, and depression. I mean, again, this is not just relate to black trans women. This is for a whole bunch of black folks who are not present for their babies in the ways that they should be, who can solve a lot of issues if they would choose themselves first and choose their children and mm. prioritize their needs. And I'm loving the mamas like Octavia, who's up on the call, who's being mamas today um, uh, and, and supporting their kids and being mm -hmm. present for their young folks. Um, they need it. Um, number four, I would trust the process of transformation, knowing that we will get to the other side of it together. Number five, I will be accountable and check others by freely exposing the harm that they've caused. So thank you, Rania, for being able again to have the skill and capacity to interrupt that violence and expose people, even if it's through guiding them through questions, um, but having grace for folks while exposing them, calling them out and calling them in at the same damn time mm -hmm. is also a skill um, that folks should um, take on. And lastly, if death shall take you from me, I will celebrate you and bury you in light, paint mm -hmm. it for the God in glitter and wrapped in all of your glory. Um, you know, we oftentimes don't feel safe even after death, mm -hmm. that folks who take our bodies would do whatever they want to with them, whether it's science or whether it's our families dressing us in ways we don't want to be seen. Um, and so to know, oh, I'm going to cry, I'm sorry. So to know mm -hmm. that someone can make a pledge um, and commit to that um, and to expose and interrupt the family's bullshit while it's happening, to have mm -hmm. that skill and capacity to do that, that's the kind of world that um, I'm hoping to see for trans folks. Mm -hmm. All the feels and the love, thank you. I'm pledging too. Child, I got the page up and everything. Thank you for sharing space with me. Absolutely. Thank you. I miss I you. I can't wait to see you, you again. I put my hands on you. I need to. I need some of this with you. <laughs> Come on, honey. We're gonna have a cocktail. We're gonna have a mocktail. And we're gonna have some other things wait. too. Can't wait. Hello, hello. <laughs> Bye. I love you. I Thank appreciate you guys. Thank you, PWN. Thank you, PWN. Yes, thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful interview and and a great message. That was really good. Like that was really good to just even see the back and forth that you both had. Like it was really beautiful. So thank you. And I'm gonna take us into the second part and final portion of the readings for our honorees. And now we have Marnina, the Queen Miller. House of Influence, 
As one of our very own board members, Marnina is deeply committed to and fiercely loved by her PWN family. She takes great honor in being a leader in the community and fights back in a world where bodily autonomy is being challenged. Marnina says every day we continue to thrive is resistance in the face of anti-Blackness and colonialism. And she is dedicated to healing and loving herself every single day. That's why she is Marnina, the queen. Shadon McCants, House of Influence. Shadon is a beautiful, bold black woman living with HIV who is also a licensed counselor, using her lived experience to help others on their journey. She is a dynamic motivational speaker, trainer and leader with over 15 years of experience on the quest to end the HIV epidemic and other disparities with a specific focus on Black women's liberation. As Shadon says, every heel has a soul and every soul needs healing. I don't think I say that as good as Shadon though. <laughs> Next we have Masonia Trailer, House of Torch Snatchers, as a mother, speaker, HIV AIDS activist, and CEO founder of Lady Burgundy. Masonia has, a, has demonstrated history of advocacy and community engagement. She is a leader in advocating for women living with HIV and holds positions on various community advisory boards and committees, such as being appointed the second vice chair of the Metropolitan Atlanta HIV Health Services Planning Council. Masania has reached over 100,000 adolescents and young adults, as well as millions of individuals around the world, empowering and educating them on HIV AIDS. Kayla Gore, House of Torch Snatchers. As co-founder and executive director of My Sister's House, Memphis, Kayla Renee Gore, works to help coordinate homeless services, conduct direct outreach, and advocate for the rights of TLGBQ people, especially transgender women. Her organizing work includes fighting for housing equity for all people who are chronically homeless and advocating for the just treatment of transgender people by law enforcement. Visibility is important because it humanizes our existence, making sure younger TGNC people know they belong and that someone is fighting like hell so they don't have to. Deirdre Speaks Johnson, House of Torch Snatchers. Deirdre Speaks Johnson is the co-founder of Ending Criminalization of HIV and over incarceration in Virginia, ECHO VA, a vast network of multiracial and gender inclusive Virginians led by people living with HIV and their allies fighting for freedom from stigma and injustice for all. She is also the national program and strategic planning manager at the CIRO project. State lead for PWN, a graduate of our 2019 policy fellowship, a member of Sister Love Inc. 2020 Leading Women's Society, a U equals U ambassador, and so much more. With a bold and captivating personality, she hosts a nightly Facebook show as Deirdre Speaks on medical and medicine adherence, along with other topics relevant to people living with HIV. Tana Pradia. Pradia our chapter honoree. Tana has quickly become a dedicated and trusted leader in the HIV movement. She uses her voice to amplify and build the leadership of other upcoming advocates. This can be seen in the PWN Texas Greater Houston Area Chapter she helped co-found. She is passionate about advocacy, decriminalizing HIV in the U.S., and sits at many decision-making tables to ensure the leadership of women, especially Black women living with HIV, is elevated. A fun fact about Tana is she helped to name Liberation Way, the road leading up 
to the 2023 Celebrate and Honor Black Women in the HIV Movement to ensure we are having important dialogue about anti-Blackness in the HIV movement. In her words, this is about liberation. And I chuckle a little bit because I was on that call when she got us together. <laughs> and we love you for it. Thank you, Aisha. Let's give all of the honorees a hand. I see all of the hearts and the, the, the thumbs up. It is beautiful. This has been, this is so beautiful. It, uh, my heart is bursting with hearts. So next we will have Araya back on because we're having a fashion show. Araya, let's do this. Yes. Y'all ready for your mini ball? So you probably got your notorious headdress. Who's walking? Who's coming to the show? So this is just anything on your head. Uh, 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 and you qualify. Yes. Come on now. Oh, oh, we got our first contestant. Come on, show it to us, girl. Show it all the sides. Every side. Yes. Yes. Kind of experience the, the, the how it goes in a small kind of way. Thank y'all for participating. This was fun. And there's a lot of great women being honored and a lot of great women that are putting on hats and a lot of great women that are just here. And I'm, it's an honor, uh, honor, definitely, to be with all of you. Oh, Deidre said switching glasses. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, Antoinette, I think they will set you up with your prize. And on to our next session. Can I yield my prize? Because I vote. I work here. So I would love for somebody else to win. I just enjoy a good time, y'all. But I thank you. <laughs> well, that was a wonderful, wonderful way to come into our next segment. And without further ado, I am going to introduce you all to Deidre and Antoinette. You have the floor, my love. See, I only had to change my glasses because when I have one with the ones y'all recognize, I can't see the screen. So um, thank you, sisters, um, that sent me some glasses where I ain't got my scriptions, as the folk would say, um, in it so I can see. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, hey girl, hey, hey y'all, so happy, so happy, I'm so happy, this is my good sis, a lot of people already know this, but I actually get the opportunity to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation, let me just get on speaker for you so I can just see you, but I'm so excited, are you excited? I am so excited, so I had to fix my face. So if I go on camera, y'all, off camera, please know because um, the internet where I'm at, it's some crappity crap. So if I go off it, is, but it's probably because somebody also started cutting onions. Because I'm like you, every person that they highlighted is like my sister. They are not like anything else but my sisters. Even the year before last year, these are my my mothers like my movement mothers so it's such an honor and a privilege um number one to be honored by your peers um <laughs> i take i don't um yeah i i'm not the onions is starting but they not i don't take this lightly to be honored by my peers and more importantly um to be having this conversation with you um on this amazing day, I hope somebody, if you don't celebrate a black woman at least once a month, um, then you, you know, pull on 
you. So let's let's start that trend of at least once a month we're celebrating at least one woman in your life. So let's let's get into it, sister girl. Well, we celebrating you today, along with them beautiful glasses, some beautiful locks, that black girl essence, all of your joy that you come with. We are trying to celebrate you. So. I know we came up with a few questions. We're trying to have a conversation. You want to ask me some stuff? I'm like, uh-uh, this ain't about me. This about you. We could save me for another time. But Deidre, like, I know a little bit about you. I know how you got into this work and, like, what's, what's driving you. But we've had conversations about anti-Blackness. We've talked about um, cisgender and transgender women coming in solidarity, working with each other, and, like, how much that will really change the world and shift this work that we are trying to do, shift our movement, like really push us towards liberation. So I want to hear what was your first experience or like what got you into this work? What got your toes wet and who? Well, honestly, what got me started was the fact that um, I was pregnant when I found out my HIV status. And um, after I gave birth um, in the hospital, there was a, 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 a bad pink. Oh, I didn't mean to say, here we go with the internet. Am I back? I'm okay. okay. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my camera off to save my bandwidth. So, um, there was a, a index card that said wear gloves. And that was the first time that I knew that I needed to fight stigma um, to make sure that no matter what, if they were living with HIV or not, that they were gonna be okay and that there was gonna be a space available for them. And then we transitioned maybe about four years later. I met the most beautiful woman I have ever met in my life. I ain't know how to even accept her. I ain't know what to do. But if you don't know, um, there's a beautiful woman that lives here in um, Virginia. And oh, let me make a very thing statement. So when I say women, and I'm sad that I have to say this on a regular. So for me, Deidre Speaks, when I say women, I'm inclusive of all women and all of their diversity. So I always um, need to be very clear when I say that. Um, if you don't like it, uh, you can kick rocks with no socks. But um, that is honestly my interpretation. We are all women. We do what we need to do. And if you struggle like us, then you know. So that's one part. So I met this woman. Her name is Zakia Jamasier. Ew, 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 the, the Zika, Zakia Jamasier. And so at the end of the day, Zakia taught me how to move in this movement. We were outreach workers together. Um, she taught me everything. She taught me how to put on makeup. Um, she taught me how to carry on as a lady in all kinds of ways. And she was the first one to really accept me as who I am and my kookiness and everything else in between. And she taught me a lot. And so that just kind of carried first part. But then years later, I come to find out that beautiful womb nugget I had is non-gender conforming, non-binary. And I'm glad that I met the folks that I've met in my life. And no matter how they wanted to present themselves, I wanted to be a conduit of being able to create change in the space when they, they got there. I knew it at three. And now they're 22 years old. And so I wanted to make a safe and brave space for everybody. And um, that's really, honestly, like what, what really got it started. And the folks that really accept me for who I, I am were, the, were all of my trans sisters, even to this day. Octavia, I would address that SOS that I happen to get. <laughs> like they dress me, they make sure I'm together when I have to do major events. Like that is like, that's it, that's all. Yes, thank you for recognizing Zakia into this space. Zakia is definitely somebody who we need to recognize and honor as a movement mother, as a house mother, as a ballroom queen, legend, icon, all of the things. So thank you, Deidre, for bringing us into this space. Me and Deidre went to a ball, and Zakia, <laughs> we, was, we was gagging. We were screaming, like, Zakia was probably embarrassed at me and Deidre in the front row, like, Zakia, Zakia, we was like, this is not etiquette. 
this is not ballroom etiquette. But we showed up and showed out for our sister and changed, okay? We so <laughs> did. We did. We sure did. And it was honestly, it was so beautiful. It was such a beautiful experience and moment. And I thank you, Deidre, for bringing Zion into this space. Your your child, your baby, your, I call them crock fruit because I have one <laughs> over there. Um, and like how that has pushed you into understanding more about pronouns, respecting pronouns, respecting people in their identities, helping you grow as a mother. And Tony Michelle just talked about like the, the I want to call them poor values, but just the commitment, you know, that, that we can make to our community, uh, to our trans sisters. And you have done that for your for your child. So how has having a child like Zion like changed you and like changed the, the way you navigate throughout this movement? Well, honestly, I have to say up front, what changed me was his work first because I didn't know where Zion was going in life. And then I got the ability to um, meet a whole lot of people in their whole diversity and understand more. And so now I've been able to navigate that part. It's been hard, especially as a black cis woman. Um, I hate, I mean, it's not that I hate the word cis, but just as a black woman, let me, let me go there. As a black woman um, to navigate that and just some of the, the negative things we hear as black women, as black folks navigating folks that are in different spaces and having to teach family and friends. And I think the biggest highlight that I can give, and yes, I'm gonna give a shout out to Hynek, because as far as I'm concerned, the Hynek and Emory, virtual and in person was the best one ever. Shout out to all the partners that participated. But um, my parents were there and they were learning about pronouns. And to have my dad to come on stage at the end and say, you know, we grew up in the South, so you say you guys. And to actually have learned at Hynek, it's not you guys, it's you all. And to be, and to correct themselves on stage and to say that. So I know we're making progress in little spaces, but, um, you know, like that was like the biggest part was to bring family along when I knew in this rural two stoplight area, I'm in that not everybody was going to get it. And then if y'all know me as a torch snatcher, I still don't believe I'm a torch snatcher. <laughs> Um, I'm just Deidre. I just ain't got nothing to lose. Like I'm already homeless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm able to be in spaces with folks just because of you all. But at the same time, I don't have nothing to lose. I'm a black woman living in America. What else I got to lose? So I'm going to talk. That's why it speaks. I'm going to talk shit. I'm going to talk about people. I'm going to bring the truth to you as best as I can. And if I don't, guess what? My sisters bring me back to life. You already know that we're gonna get together okay sure that's we what we are. <laughs> that's what we yeah, we are. and you made a great point about bringing family along how we um sometimes the the i love the word that you use you call them friendly what a, a, like the friends and the family coming together and how sometimes like our our chosen community or not so chosen community or is who we are like the closest to who is who we understand us and sometimes that's most of the time that's our HIV community that's why yeah. we created these house balls one house that I would say that she created is pillow talk <laughs> pillow talk pillow talk now on pillow talk we have a game y'all well I want to say it's a game of check-in but it came up did you can give y'all the backstory but we was talking about cards so they say and we were saying like swipe, tap, or insert. Now we are very sex positive in this space. We love sex at Pillow Talk, but that's not all we talk about. We talk about comfort and making sure people are safe. And Deidre has created a space that is inclusive, that recognizes everybody and where they are. We have folks from a very, very two month diagnosis down to 28, 30 years, 35 years. And I thank you, Deidre, for you just mentioned like you're homeless and yet you get on these calls every single week. Not a lot of people do that, y'all. Like not a lot of people have support groups every single week. Same time. Sometimes we in there till two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. because, because 
folks need it. We need to have these conversations. We need this safe space. So DJ, I'm gonna bring a little fun into it. All right. <laughs> so I want you to I name hope my mama ain't people. here. <laughs> three people on this call. We are very sex positive. Who you see in this space? Who you would swipe, tap, or insert? Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Okay, so I got a question. I know we're recording. At this at the end of the day, at you know what? I ain't got nothing to lose. So um some of y'all go ahead and gas the pearls, get ready. So we do swipe, tap, and insert. We're gonna do the swipe, tap, and insert, but then we gonna explain what swipe, tap, and insert really came down to. Yes. So if I had to swipe, I would swipe Murray Pennant. And I'm going to leave that at, at that at U equals U plus. I would swipe them to the left. Um, there's a lot of other things that I would do. And yes, I'm saying that publicly, publicly as you just speak. Hold on, let me come on for a second so y'all can say. Murray Penner will swipe to the left. And I might get a call from HR a little bit later in some other places. Yeah, I said it. I said what I said. I ain't got nothing to lose. Tap. Oh, tap. Hold on, wait. What we mean by tap? Do we mean I'm gonna tap that ass, or do you mean I'm gonna tap you? With... You gonna tap? You gonna tap it? Let's just say that. Might tap it and leave it, and tap it and walk. Away. What you tap? It? Oh, tap it and leave it. Okay, all right. You know, brought a whole other game plan to the to the game. So I would tap it and leave it. Ooh, there's a lot. But some of them is so wrong for us. I don't even gonna lie. So um one that I would tap and leave would be Omarion. And if y'all know the story, I met Omarion when he was like 17 and um was at a radio station and he was trying to get with me and I was in my like 20s and I was like, that's uh, uh no sir. But now that you are legal age, I will tap that and we'll have no no we'll Hope you either leave me money or I'm gonna leave you money in the morning. Hopefully it's the vice versa. You leave me. Um answer? I'm gonna insert uh, Bill Gates money into my bank account. That's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna insert Bill Gates money into my um, my bank account. That's what we're gonna do. So just so y'all know, I know we probably got to wrap up. So we were having a conversation at Pillow Talk Thanksgiving, even on Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, New Year's, we have um, Pillow Talk for those that don't have family, friends, or to celebrate. And um, somebody happened to bring up, and I'm actually going to call it, well, no, I ain't going to call it out because it's confidentiality. Someone happened to bring up that they was at the gas station and they was talking about tap it, insert, and swipe. And at the end of the day, we were actually talking about your credit card is what we really was talking about. But my mom happened to be walking past and was like, what is y'all talking about? But we were talking about a credit card, but then it just led into everything else, into what we just experienced just now, which who would you tap, who would you insert, and who would you swipe? So those are the kind of things that we experienced on, on Pillow Talk. Uh, we've even, there, yeah, we won't even go into half the stuff we've talked about. And a lot of folks think Pillow Talk is about sex, but it is really about real life experiences. We share updates, we share all kinds of things. And we have on average, and I don't make it up, 300 years of experience in the room every week. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I know you don't want me to ask, but I'm gonna ask you one question because I know we gotta go. Bringing somebody that I know we also have recognized in some space, and that's Tiffany, um, my love child. Um, one of the things, and I love the questions that we had earlier about how as um, a, a black woman, how can we show up for trans women and for cis women? But I'm actually gonna ask you, how as a, a person of lived experience, how can we show up, or uh, in others, how can we show up for individuals of dandelions that are, um, are deemed dandelions and those that were born with HIV? How can we as individuals show up for y'all? You thought I won't go get you, but I got you. 
Oh my gosh, I love you. <laughs> well, um, honestly, dandelions, one thing I love about dandelions and about lifetime survivors is the fact that dandelions has no gender, has no sexuality. It's literally what would be considered as a weed, as the most unforgotten weed of that, but it's the most medicinal and the most healing and the most um, just anti-inflammatory. It's just healing all around. So we automatically create an inclusive space um, just by being who we are, just by being born into this work. And that's why we identify as lifetime survivors. So the way you can show up for us, I would say, is to just speak us, speak us up recognize us, know that we are around, know that we are there, um, and bring us into the spaces, into spaces where you don't see us, bring us in, mention us, um, because we've been fighting, we've been here, we were born here. So I love you, Adija, for bringing that up and, and recognizing us, and I appreciate you. I know everybody here can like second when I say that, Adija, you have been a sister in change. You have created change. You are a torch snatcher, literally, like unapologetically. We know this. Candy Burris knows this now. <laughs> Her whole staff knows this. Um, let, let's go ahead and keep it real. Uh, yes, Madison knows this too because we've been texting over the last week. That's my girl. You know how to take HIV into many doors unapologetically, and we love you, and we appreciate you for that. So we're giving you your flowers today worldwide. Yes, yeah, somebody put in the chat, okay? Thank you, DJ. We thank you, and we honor you today, and we appreciate you. So I hope you feel all this love. Everybody drop it worldwide in the chat. DJ, speak worldwide. <laughs> so and I'm going to I'm straight up and down end with this part. So I'm going to keep it 1,000. Y'all know I always keep it 100. Even today, some of y'all know I just got a brand new car. And because of a technicality, I might have to get my car up. But no matter what, as much, and I heard this about two hours before this event, I was refusing to show up, not show up for y'all when I want to go and tap and swipe the folks I got to deal with. But I know the one reason thing that God gave me is the gift of this, to be able to speak up, not just for me, but for all of you represented and then some. So I don't have nothing to lose. I know God got me. I know y'all got me. But at the end of the day, I was brought here by nothing but by faith. But I'm always going to show up for each and every one of y'all. And some people think it's lip service when I say I love you. I ain't know I love you. I, I, I love you and I mean it. So have that understanding. That's what it is. And one little known fact that I found out over the last two weeks, and I swear I'm going to stop, is I just found out, and I, I didn't get a chance to tell PWN this, but my dad had the honor of um, dedicating a plaque. And if you don't know any hammer, do your research. If you know anything about uh, poll taxes, Annie Hammer was a woman, a black woman, who actually helped to stop the poll tax in the area where I grew up in Alexandria. Um, they dedicated her plaque. Well, I actually a historical marker, and I found out that my grandmother was actually a member of an organization called the Assembly that actually helped rural individuals to get to the polls, pay their poll taxes, and whatever. So there are some legacies that even though we talk about legacy of trauma, there's also some legacy of legacy that we're holding on to and that sometimes we don't even know. So you are great. You are valuable. You think that you aren't, you are. I love you each and everyone because my internet is going unstable, but I love you and I mean it. And can't wait to the day. Oh, well, thank you all. Thank you both. It was this was a wonderful segment, and, and thank you, Deidre, for all that you do. 
And now we will go into our mystery time. Hey y'all. Um, wow. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so moved by everything we've heard so far and so inspired by all these fierce black women. Um, and we're not done celebrating a and honoring black women in our movement y'all so um i want to talk a little bit about some more black women that pwn's non-black staff want to celebrate and uplift um celebrate and honor black women in the hiv movement was very much the brainchild of current and former black staff at pwn and it came from a deep sense of outrage and pain at the way the hiv movement does not consistently show up for and honor the ways black women have always contributed to our movement. And I wanna be clear that the HIV field and PWN as an organization would not be where we are without black cis and trans women. Like many multiracial and multigender organizations as an organization explicitly committed to uplifting black cis and trans liberation, we continue to evolve on our own journey. Um, and PWN is here today because of black cis and trans women who who hold up a fierce and beautiful vision for justice in our movement, in our communities, and who engage in deep emotional labor to let us non-Black folks know when we're getting it wrong, and who hold us all accountable to liberatory practice. Um, and I need to especially thank and uplift the incredible Vanita Ray, one of our honorees um, this year, who has done so much to pave the way for our field, and for PWN as an organization to really tackle issues of anti-Black racism head on and with a true vision of love. As Cornell West says, justice is what love looks like in public. And I want to uplift every one of PWN's current Black staff. Y'all, in the theme of this year, um, trailblazers, um, these folks are truly trailblazers. You know, it can be easier to focus on accountability for other organizations, for other institutions, for other decision makers um, externally. But some of the deepest and most transformational work we can have as organizers is when we have conversations with other folks we love, with our families of birth, our families of choice, folks we're building and in movement with, um, with our political homes, about the ways that people hurt us, the ways we hurt each other, the ways we get in the way of Black liberation and trans liberation, how we get confused about our real pathways to freedom. And so to PWN's Black staff, you have been so generous. Um, you have been so visionary. You have led us with vision, with purpose, with rigor. You have held us accountable organizationally, and we are all stronger and better for it. We have moved through courageous conversations, and we've committed together to transformative practices to truly uplift Black liberation. These women you see in front of you right now have also moved the entire field um, when it comes to celebrating and honoring Black women. We've been seeing so many of our movement partners and allies also taking steps to uplift, celebrate, and honor Black women. And it's because of the work that our amazing Black staff team has been doing. And so on behalf of PWN's non-Black staff, including white folks, including non-Black people of color. I wanna thank and honor each of you individually and collectively, and we want our whole community to know who each of you are. So we wrote you each little love letters um, that I'm gonna read, and we want you to know that we love you and we're fully committed to having your backs on the path to liberation. Um, so first of all, Crystal Townsend. <laughs> um, Crystal is PWN's organizing director, a trailblazer in the HIV movement. Crystal was instrumental in founding our Houston-based electoral organizing campaign, which reached over 150,000 unlikely voters in the historic 2020 um, elections cycle. She also serves on the board of the Mahogany Project, a Black trans-led organization working to reduce social isolation, stigma, and acts of injustice in TQLB plus communities of color. PWN staff wants to celebrate and honor Crystal for her ability to hold the big picture, to move us with insightful questions, for her steadfast commitment to PWN members and our values, and for always challenging herself and us to do better for Black liberation. Please join me in honoring Crystal. And I'm gonna come out. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Um, yes, Crystal. All the snaps for Crystal. Um, next up, I want to make sure everybody knows Aisha Scott, PWN's incredible finance and operations manager. Aisha is a motivation speaker, a health educator, a mentor, a peer, a support group facilitator, and a trailblazer in the HIV movement. Aisha was pulled into HIV advocacy in 2014 when her status was shared without her consent on social media. And in partnership with many different organizations and agencies, Aisha has brought her own fierce presence to HIV advocacy, uplifting and fighting for women living with HIV, especially lifetime survivors, through sisterhood and support. And PWN's non-Black staff want to celebrate and honor Aisha for her authenticity, for her compassion, for the way she, account she models truth-telling and accountability and holds us all to a high standard for PWN members. Please join me in honoring Aisha Scott. <laughs> yes. I can't go on mute. I got you. I've, I've been screaming over here the whole time, by the way, this whole event. Yeah, y'all have been bringing it. Um, yes, we can't say enough and we can't we can't honor these black women enough. Um, next up, please join me in honoring Antoinette Jones, Nettie, um, PWN's national field organizer who began her work with HIV advocacy in her early 20s as a peer navigator, facilitating access to preventative care and treatment for people living with and vulnerable to acquiring HIV. Antoinette is a trailblazer in the HIV movement. She identifies as a dandelion, a lifetime survivor, and vertical woman living with HIV since birth. Antoinette is passionate about building leaders in her community and empowering folks to take care and take charge of their sexual health, wellness, and pleasure. In addition to her role at PWN, Antoinette is the co-executive director of Dandelions Incorporated, a nonprofit that's, that centers the development of verticals, people born with HIV. PWN's non-Black staff want to celebrate and honor Antoinette for her fierce style for bringing healing into our organizing spaces and for her deep and transformative love for our communities, which inspires us all to do better. Please join me in honoring the amazing Antoinette Jones. We are so grateful and inspired by your leadership, Antoinette. We love you, Nettie. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, next up, Sally Thomas, uh, also known as DJ Big Sal. If you've been wondering who is rocking the ones and twos this whole event, it's our very own, very own DJ Big Sal, who has had me dancing like all day long, pretty much. Um, Sally is PWN's policy specialist in decriminalization and a dedicated reproductive justice advocate and black feminist focused on addressing systemic oppression and moving us towards joy and freedom. Sally is a trailblazer in the HIV movement. She is a true reproductive justice lawyer who knows that those who are closest to the issues are closest to the solution. And that, and that passion of hers comes through in the way she shows up with and for PWN members. Um, Sally was a medical social worker for several years, and that experience led her to go on to Howard University School of Law and eventually to PWN as a Reproductive Justice Legal Fellow. And we're so grateful to have Sally as a permanent member of our team now um, in her role in our policy department. And so on behalf of PWN's non-Black staff, we celebrate and honor Sally for always bringing the music, the vibes, the laughter, for her rigorous commitments to Black queer and trans liberation, and for leading us to a world without walls, police, or prisons. Please join me in uplifting Sally. Woo, woo, woo. Big DJ Sal. Yes, DJ Big Sal. Always rocking it. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. For those who are at High Neck, you also got to see Sally MC the karaoke night. Sally brings all the things. We're so grateful. You know, the movement that plays together stays together. Um, and last but not least, please join me in uplifting and honoring the incredible Elena Ferguson. 
PWN's policy specialist, who comes to us as a Nashville native who earned her JD from Belmont University College of Law. Um, Elena is a trailblazer in the HIV movement. She has shaped and strengthened the work of the Health Not Prisons Collective, which is a, an intersectional group led by and for directly impacted communities that is working to decarcerate public health and to abolish the abolish the systems that put our communities in harm's way in the first place. Um, Elena has not only brought amazing coordination skills, but also a clear vision of justice and liberation. She came to us after working to fight for doula access for Black women living in Tennessee and also serving as a legal intern with the Nashville Public Defender's Office, the Juvenile Court of Nashville, and Law for Black Lives. Uh, PWN's non-Black staff want to celebrate and honor Elena for her unparalleled check-in questions, her on-point podcast recommendations, her futurist visions, and her unfailing commitment to abolishing the systems designed to harm our communities, bringing more heart, love, and abolist vision than we can say. Please join me in honoring and uplifting Elena Ferguson. Um, <laughs> Y'all are all amazing. We are so grateful for every single one of you. Um, and on behalf of PWN's non-Black staff, um, of myself and the rest of our staff team, I just want to say that we could not be more grateful for everything that you have brought to our organization, to our movement, to our community, and to the ways that you continue uh, to push us to do better on the pathway to liberation. We want you to know that we are here with you, we will have your backs, and we will do our best um, to always um, to always have your backs on the path to black liberation. Thank you. Congratulations, y'all. Yes, shout out to all of the PWN black staff and the whole staff as well. But yay, y'all pictures look so beautiful. Y'all look so beautiful right there. <laughs> All right, I think we are going into a um, memorial for some of our sisters. Awesome, thank y'all so much. Um, I'm gonna be leading us in this memorial as we honor a few of our sisters, our, the lives that were lost this year. Um, and recognizing the fact that although we are honoring two, that there are many more that we have lost, um, trans sisters, um, all of our Black women who have fought and continue to fight. Um, and I want to start us off with a moment of silence. And for us to just breathe, have a collective breath, um, because we just had such an amazing, amazing um, time honoring some amazing people in the movement. So if we can just take a collective breath um, and, you know, and deeply breathe in the fact that we are all here, we are all have the opportunity and the privilege to share the space with one another, to look at each other, to pick up the phone and text and call each other. And that is not the reality for the lives that we have lost in this movement. So breathe very deeply and give thanks and be grateful. And just come back whenever you are ready. 
I give thanks to you all. We know that there is strength in silence. We know that there's movement in silence. Energy continues to flow. I wanna highlight what Tony Michelle shared in one of their values in their honor. And it says, and if death shall take you from me, I will celebrate you and bury you in light painted for the gods and glitter and wrapped in all of your glory. And when I saw that, I immediately thought of Tiffany and I felt his presence. So it's an honor that we get to recognize Tiff as a trailblazer in this HIV movement. And it's unfortunate that we have to do it now <laughs> because Tiff been deserved her flowers. Many of y'all know the crop top queen, the legend, the the door breaker, the table shaker. As many of us say, Tiff did not give no fucks. <laughs> and that was unapologetic. That was who Tiffany was. And we love and we honor her for that. I want to read the bio that we created. Tiffany Morero was an incredible presence and joy to be around. She lifted us up with her laughter, her joy, her radical authenticity, and her willingness to call things as they were. She was unapologetically Black, y'all know this, sex positive, and uncontested the crop top queen, okay? Sit on that in our movement. And we are holding her, our community close at this time, especially the dandelions. Tiff stood 10 toes down for the dandelions move. <laughs> and I, I love Tiff so much for that. So y'all continue to lift Tiff's name, to drop your memories that you have with Tiff, share flowers, continue to post on her page, I have a group chat with me, Tiffany and Dee, and I still text the group chat because it just makes me feel warm. It makes me feel good. So for all who love Tiff and who remembers Tiff, and if you don't know Tiff, you better Google Tiff. <laughs> Please just give her give some love and speak her name and give her her flowers that she should have gotten while she was here in the physical realm but she's still here with us spiritually. And we're gonna take a moment of silence before we move on. Alrighty, thank you all so much. Remsky Evans. Remsky, Remsky, Remsky. Remsky was a state lead from Mississippi, okay? Proud Mississippi. She was also an HMP advocate. And we honor and we love Rimsky. She was taken from us way too soon. She was on a trajectory that was unstoppable. 
we give thanks to Zanita, who recognized something in Rimsky and introduced her to the space of PWN. Because without that, we would not even know Rimsky. We probably still will. Okay, we still will, because Rimsky was unstoppable. <laughs> she, was, she was unstoppable. So many people love Rimsky. Her voice came with power. When she spoke, she shifted minds and hearts. Her story, she leaves behind children, her sons in Mississippi, a whole community who stood behind her. Okay? And I'm gonna read to I'm gonna read Rimsky's bio. Rimsky Evans was a loving mother and fierce advocate for Black women living with HIV in the South. Rimsky proudly served as the first PWN state lead from Mississippi Pride, and well as an advocate, as an HMP advocate. She was passionate organizer and had so much freedom dreams, so many freedom dreams for her community. She never failed to lead with love and bring great energy and an incredible vision to all of the movement spaces she occupied. Her willingness to grow and learn in service of the community will be missed. She will be missed. We love you, Rimsky. We love you. We miss you. And we speak your name in this moment. <clears throat> Thank y'all so much. You have memories of Rimsky. Please drop them in the chat. Um, continue to share love to Rimsky's family on Instagram. Her sons still see the messages. They still use her page. So please definitely send them love. Um, I remember every time I'll get on a state league call with Rimsky, I'll play, if you know, if you know, you know, I'll play Mississippi Pride. <laughs> and we would just laugh. And she would just come and be like, yup, that's me. If you haven't seen the Blind Angel series, Rimsky has an episode on there. You can watch it. Remember her honor. Remember why she did this work, how she showed up authentically herself. And we thank, we thank her for that. We can take a few more moments to just breathe in this space, in this atmosphere, to hug each other, to hold each other, to send one another love. I love each and every one of y'all on this call. I thank y'all for being here, for recognizing Black women and the struggle of Black women and how we show up how we are die hard, how we hold everything on our shoulders because we move and we lead with love. So thank y'all. Thank you so much, Antoinette, for walking us through this beautiful um, piece to honor Tiffany and Rimsky. And as we wrap up, y'all, um, I think everybody in the room can understand how much 
Black women are carrying and how much we deserve to be respected, honored, and celebrated for all the things we do um, for the world. And so oftentimes the work that we do is erased or not uplifted. And we want to take a step in small ways to make that change. So we invite y'all and call you to action. If you have an organization and you have the ability, you do have the ability to celebrate and honor Black women in your own ways. It can be something small that can have a huge ripple effect. So we invite you to take the pledge. Um, celebrate, honor Black, and honoring Black women can happen 365 days a year, not just on August 18th. So we invite you to find a way to celebrate, honor, and recognize the Black women in your life and uh, through your organizations. This can look many different ways. It looks different ways for everybody. You can give uh, Black women staff a day off. You can create Black-only spaces at your organization so they can talk about um, what is impacting them in a safe way, in a trusted way. You can increase the leadership of Black women by giving them opportunities. You can honor their expertise and contribution in meaningful ways, like pay us. Um, you can demand a domestic HIV response that centers the needs and leadership of Black, transgender, and cisgender women, including but not limited to a federal policy agenda that elevates the priorities of Black women living with HIV. It centers their lived experience in all policy, programming, and services, and funding decisions, funding decisions that supports their leadership, their lived experience, and resources Black women. So take the pledge. You can scan the QR code. You can click the link and let us know how you will celebrate and honor Black women. We want to hear how you're doing that and we want to elevate that. So we have our hashtags, listen to Black women, pay Black women, respect Black women, protect Black women, and honor Black women. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Crystal. So we have had a wonderful, wonderful evening. We have laughed, we have cried, and we have witnessed joy. And again, I don't think that we take enough time to love on and honor ourselves. And for all that are on this call today, we see you, we honor you, we appreciate you, and we love you. And again, I just want to definitely make sure that I uplift, you know, Tiffany and Rimsky, but I also want to make sure that I'm giving my flowers to my sisters while they're still here. Yes. Without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to my beautiful sister, Ebony, who has been my wonderful, wonderful co-moderator today. And I could not have done this without Ebony by my side, and I wouldn't want to have done this with anyone else. So I uh, thank, thank you. you so much, Octavia. And thank you to PWN for this wonderful celebration. Um, and a celebration it was. We have was. loved on each other. We have used our voices to uplift thoughts, opinions, our ideas. Um, spoken with boldness and purpose. Yes. We have... Um, had courage the courage and confidence that allows us to be our true selves i love it i've seen all of it here mm -hmm. um i want to just say black woman you are fierce you yes. are powerful go out and be your 100 percent true authentic self and i want to reiterate to the community listen to black women listen. hey black women we hey. respect black women. Respect. Protect black women. Protect. Honor black women. Honor. And I mean all black women. Oh. I love you all. It has been so a privilege to share this space. 
Um, and we will bid you a good night. Yes, and we want to turn over to DJ Sal to give us some beef as we dance our way up out of here today. <laughs>